Hi folks, it's Rich here. <clears throat> Can you hear the washing machine trying to take off in the background? <laughs> uh, so, there's no guitar in my hand. I'm in a funny situation and I've got a confession to make. So, I bought the Squire Classic Vibe 70s Strat again, didn't I? And I said it was a keeper. It's just gone back. What is wrong with me? Hmm. It's weird, isn't it? I've had a few guitars the second time round recently thinking that, you know, that's the way to go. And well, no, maybe not. Memories of why you like them before aren't the same. Sticky neck. Didn't think it bothered me, but I was trying to play a Nick Johnston song or learn it over and over and over and over again, but obviously because it's hard and I'm rubbish. And the more I played it and it was a warm day, got sticky hot hands. Now I think it's a mixture of frustration of trying to play the song and the sticky neck. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't matter, it's gone. The Harley Benton T52 is also gone. So for a person who's had 130 guitars, I currently have zero guitars. Nil. No guitars. What am I gonna buy? I don't know. So the, the challenge is, there's always a challenge, because I get bored of stuff, I get that. But <clears throat> if I spend like five or 600 pounds on, on a guitar, I have a bit of sort of financial guitar guilt. I think, oh, that's a lot of money, or it is to me anyway, a lot of money tied up in a guitar. Should I really spend that much? You know, is, is it worth spending that much for what I get? Should I spend 300 pounds on a guitar? So at the moment, uh, Anderton's have got a B-stock GNL AS80, AS80 Deluxe, which is uh, basically a telly with humbuckers. It's 242 pounds, which is dirt cheap. But then you're like, well, just because something's cheap, it doesn't necessarily mean you want it. I haven't tried one, but I don't know. Then there were a couple of Ibanez SA series on eBay the other day, which I missed out on. Both of them were 460s, one in tropical squash, horrible colour, but uh, it went for £190, which is cheap for that. And one in a better colour, went for £304, which has been upgraded with some locking tuners, and I nearly bought that, because I've had SA 160, 260, 360 and 560s. But yeah, I didn't win those with how much I wanted to spend. Maybe it's a good thing, don't know. So then I'm like, mm, maybe I'll get, that's a, obviously Harley Benton do loads of different ones. Maybe I'll get another Harley Benton, but I don't know. Some of the lower end ones, I feel, this sounds stupid really, brand snobbery perhaps, but on the lower end Harley Bentons, I'm more than happy to spend you know, like 150 pounds or something like that. But then as soon as you start getting into like 200 plus, then you start to think to yourself, well, what other guitars are there for that? And then when you get into more like 250, 300 pounds for Harley Bentons from the Fusions, which are wonderful, don't get me wrong, but then you're like, well, there's quite a lot of options that open out on some of the more mainstream brands as well then. So it gives yourself a better resale value and yeah, I don't know, just a brand new guitar, I suppose. So then I can never decide what I'm gonna do next, you know, what am I gonna do with that? And then uh, then there's a bit of single coil versus humbucker. I really don't like the big chunky blocks on Les Paul's getting down there and I'm not too not convinced about the sticky necks on the backs of those either. So Probably not Les Pauly. I even thought about their vintage branded guitars. You know, I've had a few of those. They can be a bit hit and miss, but in the main, they're still a good guitar for the money, especially if you get a used one. I'm like, nah. You know, that vintage V100 Joe Bonamassa model which, uh, was, was pretty good. Something like that again. Although it is a Les Paul, obviously. <laughs> um, but no sticky neck because it was a relic. Ooh, relic. Road worn. So, um, yeah. And then, of course, if you've got a neck that's a uh, 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 fingerboard sorry brain fingerboard that's reasonably flat it's a little bit easier for bends and you get the action a bit lower and then if it's too flat it's not ideal either so maybe i don't know maybe 12 inches the way to go i don't know and then i mean that player series hsh i had had did like that but then you know you've, you've spent your 600 pounds again haven't you and they're like yeah it's not hsh is a bit different but then you're sort of just missing out on that true strat tone and you spent a lot of money on something but does that matter i don't know how ferro fretboard does that matter not really i don't know i just don't know where to go don't know where to go and i'm oh god i'm almost getting a bit bored with it a bit bored with it just what what to have the one guitar to rule them all would still be the, would be the, you know how some people they have one guitar and they love it, don't they? They have it for years and it gets worn out and they've replaced bits maybe and 
it just it's their go-to love. I just want a go-to that I can love and it does everything I want it to do. I don't know what that is.